So, Bethesda have just released their gameplay trailer for Rage 2 and I'm going to be giving you three reasons why you should be excited for this game. This video is also sponsored by App Nano. It's a free app where you get points for downloading other apps. For example, Lords Mobile gives you 50,000 points. You can then spend these points on gift cards from Amazon, League of Legends, PlayStation Store and lots of other games as well. And it's definitely legit because I've used it myself. Don't forget guys to use my invitation code as well because then you get another 2,500 points to spend. It's D24-94-42-41. I'll leave it in the description so you guys can copy and paste it in. You can download App Nana in the description below. But before we start, let me make one thing clear. Rage 2 is being made by id Software and Avalanche Studios. Id Software are very famous for some of the older generation FPS games and Avalanche Studios actually worked on Mad Max, which explains the similarities. The game is only being published by Bethesda. Bethesda Game Studios, on the other hand, are still working on their secret project that they will announce at E3, and that's probably going to be Starfield, but I've spoken about that in other videos. So Rage 2 is really just something you guys are getting on top of everything else. So, you know, stop complaining. So let's start off before we talk about this new gameplay trailer. What is Rage even about? Because the story is pretty cool. It's actually very similar to Fallout. In fact, the story is almost exactly the same as Fallout 4. A comet has collided with Earth, destroying most of the human population and turning the world into a wasteland. The survivors come together to form settlements, clans and basically different factions around the wastes. However, before this comet hit the Earth, there was a project called Eden. Hundreds of shelters known as Arcs were created containing cryogenic pods. These are basically pods where people can go inside them and they'll freeze you in time until 100 or so years later. So people were sealed under the surface in these cryogenic pods under the surface of the earth in order to preserve enough of the human population to rebuild after the asteroid hit. You know, expecting the worst. In the first Rage game, you start off as one of these preserved people which obviously allows for a very open-ended storytelling opportunity as you emerge into a completely new hostile world. Now, in terms of this game being a role-play game, it's not going to be that. I am pretty sure it's not going to be that, simply because when the game was leaked on E3, it was listed as an action-adventure game. So I'm 90% sure your character will already have a backstory and there won't be any role-play elements in that sense. As you can see from the trailer though, all these different environments are inhabited by very different factions within the world of Rage. Firstly, there are raiders who have formed unique looking clan, and each with their own unique cars to go with them. Cars are very important and I'll get onto that in a moment. We of course are going to have some settlements as well, full of normal people just trying to get by with what's left. But the most interesting faction are known as the Authority. We find out in the first game that they're actually responsible for the creation of mutants. And these mutants are epic in scale. We see a few more in the trailer again. They're actually just hulking behemoths of flesh. And in the first game, there were some truly epic boss battles where you would encounter them. Check out the link in the description if you want to watch my part one walkthrough of the first game. But bear in mind that the game is eight years old and, you know, things have moved on a lot since then. Anyway, the head of the authority actually rigged Project Eden so that only arcs containing supporters of the authority of this faction they wanted to create would release their inhabitants. This means that there are actually still a bunch of arcs around the world with people stuck in frozen in time because the arc never rose to the surface. So the first game ends with you finding out the location of all the other arcs around the world and then activating them. The idea being that all of these new people will come up from the ground, all these arc survivors, and you can make some kind of rebellion against the authority. Now, I'm not so sure if Rage 2 will follow on from that. I guess time will tell, though. But that's the concept of the game, and I think it's a very interesting one. 
Secondly though, look at the environments of this game. In the gameplay trailer, we can see the game is a complete open world. Unlike the first game, which would force you through very linear levels with little to no exploration, this is eight years onwards and technology has come a long way now. It appears you are pretty much free to explore the vast variety of landscapes Rage 2 has to offer. We have the classic wasteland from Rage 1, full of scrap and decaying cities with desolate abandoned buildings. Then we have the swamplands. These seem to have a completely different atmosphere and lighting to them, full of dense trees, foliage and narrow roads to navigate. It feels like I could lose myself in here when I'm exploring. And lastly, there's a huge open mountainous desert environment with a real sort of epic feeling and scale to it. And you can see the cars as they like race through it. Man, it makes me excited just seeing these clips, you know. Now the last scene that stood out for me here, this is actually a reference to the first game where you would be able to take part in Bash TV, which is basically a TV show where you would be put in an arena and have to kill lots of enemies with creative traps and boss battles against the mutants. It is a very wacky and fun sort of experience, and I hope that this is definitely returning from the first game. You'd basically earn money for how well and fast you'd clear each stage. And that brings me on to my final point about the gameplay, combat, and vehicle customization. Firstly, it seems that you actually might be able to have some kind of unique powers. You can see in the gameplay trailer at the start that there are some animations for some kind of force throw, and even like a rage mode when he's fighting this super behemoth mutant here. Of course, car combat will also be returning, and with it, I'm almost certain, car customization. That was a huge part of the first game, so I'm sure we'll see it again. Racing your car in death races was also a key feature in the first game, and I'm sure that will be returning. It even seems like the raiders have created robot walkers that you can even jump onto and blow up as well. In that regard, the gameplay actually looks like it runs pretty damn smoothly. Also, many of the old guns will clearly be returning, pretty much just your standard assault rifle, rocket launcher, shotgun, and so on. There were also some upgrades in the older game, and hopefully we'll see that again as well. We also have some of the more unique weapons like the boomerang, and I'm not so sure if they've kept the special ammo or not. The game seems to have a lot of bodies on the screen at once though, which I'm pretty excited for, because it seems like there are going to be some full-scale wars between the factions, and you can like literally imagine mowing down groups of mutants or enemies at once. So that's pretty cool to see. Personally, guys, I'm really excited for this game. It surprised me, and it's one of those things where I'm actually like, oh, there's not any hype around this game yet. This game's come out, and it's really caught me by surprise and it's got my attention. I think it combines all the gameplay elements that fans of Bethesda like, like post-apocalyptic wasteland from Fallout, and we've always wanted cars to explore the wasteland, and in that sense it's similar to Mad Max, and in fact obviously the guys working on Rage 2, Avalanche Studios actually created Mad Max, so there you have it. Huge fan, they've actually created some very graphically incredible games. In terms of id software, I'm less familiar, but apparently they were considered the kings of first-person shooter games back in the day, but I think a bit before my time, really. But there are some big names behind this project, and I think it's going to be something that's worth keeping an eye on. Maybe don't pre-order it, but I'm going to pre-order it and play it, and you guys can see my impressions of the game and make up your mind whether you want to invest in that or not. But it looks pretty damn exciting. And if you haven't already, guys, please go ahead and subscribe and press the little bell icon as well. And then YouTube will actually tell you when I have another update news video about Rage as well. Thank you for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.